Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. What does that mean? How can you have God and then Him having a Son and then God being a Spirit as well? And how can that equal one? You know, this is another question. Can't the Messiah just be like a regular man, even though we just read out all the prophecies that his name is going to be everlasting to everlasting? His name is going to be Emmanuel, God with us. Okay? Many prophecies about the uh, book of Proverbs, chapter 30, verse uh, 4. What is the name of Hashem and what is his son's name, if you can tell? Many different things in the Torah, in the Tanakh. Many different things. All I'm doing is reading them out. I'm reading out the things that you're not used to reading, or otherwise you're not, it's not explained to you that in fact, yes, the creator of the universe has a son. His name is Salvation. And it was always God's plan from the beginning, because he knew that Adam, Adam and Eve were going to fall, they were going to sin, and his son is the backup plan. His son was the backup plan for humanity. And through Israel, you know, through the Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the seed, it was God's plan to bring forth the Messiah in order to not just bless Israel, but to bless the whole world. Yes, and many prophecies about the Messiah. Those who uh, trip over this uh, stone, he's also referred to as a stone in the Bible, shall be blessed, but or upon whom it falls shall be crushed. They shall be destroyed. And so it's through the Lord's grace you have a chance to hear the good news. You have a chance to hear, indeed, what we call the gospel, the good news of Yeshua HaMashiach. He came to deliver you. He came to deliver Israel. He came to deliver you from your sins, to forgive you, to give you propitiation. With that blood that we shed, at Calvary buys you out of the, the world, buys you away from the satanic system of the world which we all live in. Unless you live in a desert, you know, where all of us are living in the world. But it was that blood that we shed that buys you out of it. And first of all, your soul has got to be redeemed. Okay? Your, your mind has got to be renewed as well. And I confess that, you know, there's many Christians that haven't renewed their mind. It takes some time. There's many people who accept Yeshua. They go along with false teachings like the Torah is nailed to the cross, which is not true. Okay, it's the curses of breaking the Torah which are nailed to the cross. In other words, Yeshua died for your sin. Not for you observing Torah, but for you breaking Torah. Hallelujah. And we also need a teacher. And that teacher is called the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, shall be your teachers, is prophecy. No man shall teach his neighbor. Maybe some of you aren't uh, familiar with these prophecies, 
But when you're bought out of the world, you confess Yeshua, the Holy Spirit will teach you the Torah. He'll teach you how to please God. He'll teach you how to uh, follow God. He'll teach you how to do things which are pleasing to God. And it says in the Torah that you can't please Hashem without faith, without uh, belief, without some type of trust in Him. And we got to trust in Him, dear friends. Hallelujah. Just as it says in Yeshua 11, the Gentiles shall trust in Him. It's talking about the Messiah. Okay, just as He was revealed to... Uh, Joseph was revealed to Egypt first, remember? And then his brothers came and received Him later on. So it's the same story, dear brothers and sisters. That yes, Yeshua is coming very soon. And uh, the Lord is calling a bride for Himself. Do you want to be the bride of Mashiach? In other words, do you want to follow the Messiah of Israel? Hallelujah. There's not many reasons that Yeshua um, can't be accepted these days. Because we've dealt with a lot of the questions about, you know, God isn't a trinity, He's one, a God. You know, yes He is. Yeshua is the only begotten Son of the living God. And through faith in Him we receive the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. Yes, brothers and sisters, it's true. Or rather, tell me how you've received the Holy Spirit in your life through doing good works. Maybe, yes, you'll feel better about yourself for a while. Maybe, it's, yes, it is pleasing to God to do good works, take care of each other. Yes, we, we got to do these things, but don't expect your good works to save you. You know, it says in the Tanakh that uh, our, our best works are like rags before God rags before Hashem. So you can't go to God and boast, look at what I did last week. I mean, He's just going to show you your sin. You're falling short. Every one of us are falling short of the glory of Hashem. Yes, it's true. Even myself, I know it's hard to believe, but even myself is falling short of the glory of God. I'm not perfect, but yes, I realize I need the Messiah, I need the Deliverer, I need the Savior. How do I how do I get that Savior? Because I know my, when I die, my physical body dies, where's my soul going to go? If you read Ecclesiastics 12, it says that that which is created from the dust shall return to the dust, but that which belongs to God should return to God. Let's hope that it does, but if it doesn't, and you, you don't have that propitiation, you don't have that blood, okay, that Lamb of God is going to pay for your sin, then what's going to happen to you? You're going to be trying to explain to God how good a person you are while God shows you all the sins, all the shortcomings you've ever done. And God is a righteous judge. He's going to have to judge you. But this is, this is the mystery of the cross at Calvary. It's the great mystery of the cross. If you trust that God has judged your sin on that cross and you trust in His name, the name of Yeshua is salvation, or Yeshu, okay, Yeshu, Yeshua, it means salvation. So you got to trust in the Lamb of God who is sent to take away the sin of Israel and the whole world, hallelujah. Yes, we must trust in the Lord. A wise rabbi once said, that doesn't matter what happens to God's people, God is always good. He's like a wise father, he's chastening his people, and a father who loves his children is always going to chastise his children. He's not going to let them uh, throw around things, run on the road. He's going to chastise them, discipline them, and teach them the right from the wrong. And that's what the Lord does. That's what He does, dear friends. Categorizes 1 to 10, the most important commandments. The first four commandments are our relationship with Hashem, with the Lord. And the next six commandments are the social commandments to do with uh, how we treat one another. And all the religions of the world talk about these last six commandments. But let's, let's just face it, only probably Judaism and some other religions really deal with the first four commandments. Hallelujah. And so believe me. Hallelujah. Judaism is not my least favorite religion, but I know that religion will not save your soul. 
good works is good. You know, it's good to do nice things, but it's not going to save you. Just in the Tanakh, it says, your best works are like rags before God. Hallelujah. Yes. And so one question God will probably ask you, you know, where is the blood? Where is the blood that was shed that's going to redeem your soul from hell? Okay? That's all. Yes, there is a future deliverance of the Eretz Israel, the land of Israel, but how about the people? I mean, everybody has generations of life and they die. Where does your soul go? You know, this is the basics of uh, the Brahakarisha, even the basics of the Torah, the basics of the Bible. If you think about it, you're created in God's image. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Want to say something? All right, Baruch Hashem. I don't know what he was saying, but praise Hashem, Baruch Hashem. And so, get back to like, what's going to happen to your soul when you die? Yes, there's going to be a future deliverance of Eretz Israel. It's in the prophets. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. What's going to happen to your soul, though? What's the very basics of uh, the Torah, the Bible? It teaches us that we have to have propitiation for our sin. Even if you go, go back to uh, Abel, Cain and Abel, remember? Abel offered the lamb to God, remember? And Cain tried to offer like vegetables and fruit and stuff like that. It didn't work. God wasn't impressed with that. But yes, he, uh, he accepted Abel's sacrifice of the lamb. And then we have Abraham going to sacrifice Isaac and then God steps in and says I have provided you a lamb okay going right through the entire Bible what does this tell you it tells you a story it tells you that when the greatest prophet who ever lived announced the Messiah 2000 years ago he said behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the whole world who is he speaking about who is he speaking about of course he was speaking about Yeshua and he knew that he had to die hallelujah it was Hashem's plan for him to die on the cross yes the Jewish people yes the Romans whoever you want to see were involved in putting him there but it was the Lord's plan very important to understand the story of the Bible okay the whole the whole story right from Bereshit right to, uh, through to Revelation, if you've read the Brihakarisha. Very important to understand the story, the narrative of the Bible. Where is the blood for your soul? Where is it? That's all God's going to ask you. Where is the blood? And what are you going to say? We don't have a temple. Uh, well, I didn't really believe that you sent a lamb. Uh, what are you going to say? No, the Lamb of God shed His blood to take away the sin of the whole world. Hallelujah. And you got to trust in that Messiah, the true Messiah who fulfilled hundreds of pro prophecies in the Tanakh and in the Navayim, the, the prophets died for your sin. There it is. It's there for you to accept. It's there for you to reject. Do you love God more than yourself? Do you value your soul above, you know, things of the world? Do you value your relationship with God more than your own wife and children? You must love God more, be your friends. Love God more than your friends. Love God more than your religion, your job, whatever it is. The commandment is, you shall love the Lord your God, Deuteronomy 6 with all your heart, all your mind, and all your strength, and your neighbor as yourself. And this is a summary, if you like, of the law and the prophets. If you manage to do these things, yes, God will bless you. God will bless you. You must have some level of blessing in your life. You must be thankful to God about something. You've got to also realize your soul is... Uh, 
to God is very precious that he was prepared to send his own son down to this earth to die for your sin. That's how precious you are to God. So don't degrade yourself. You know, look at the Bible narrative, dear friends. Again, you know, Abel sacrificed the lamb. Abraham was about to sacrifice his son, which actually God did. But God sent him a lamb. You see, so all these are these are actual prophecies about the real Messiah. Yes, the son of God was willing to sacrifice, give his own son to die for the sins of Israel. This is what the whole Bible narrative is. And let, let's look at the third temple if you want in the book of Ezekiel. Look if you've read it. It's a supernatural temple that's going to be established in Jerusalem. No man is going to build the third temple. The Messiah, the King of Kings, will build it. No man is going to build it, dear friends. Hallelujah. Even Hashem said uh, to David, David wanted to build the Lord a house for a long, long time. And he said, what house are you going to build me when the whole universe itself can't contain me? What house will you build me? But he allowed David, he allowed a Solomon, because David had shed blood, he allowed Solomon to build the temple. Okay? But it was a temple he knew, it was the last temple that's going to ever be built for the Lord upon the earth. Because when you look at Ezekiel's temple, it's a supernatural temple. Look at it. It's got water coming out of the temple mount, bursting forth throughout all the earth. Hallelujah. Ezekiel himself saw like uh, angels, the cherubim, all kind of things. Amazing. You know, God's kingdom is a kingdom not of this world. Hallelujah. His kingdom is not of this world, but it's going to come to the earth very soon. The Messiah, yes, he's part of that kingdom. He's part of Hashem's kingdom of heaven, which is not of this world, but it's coming to earth one day very, very soon. Dear friends, and he's calling a people to himself right now. Hashem is calling a people to himself right now. I'm from the UK. <laughs> Where are you from? Israel. Hallelujah. Yeah, it's Israel. Oh, no, no, sorry. Sure. Sometimes I, if you give me a guitar, I'll play music, you know, I'll take money. Otherwise, I'm just speaking the... Unless I'm singing. <laughs> me, I'm just speaking forth uh, Bible verses. Oh, don't worry, don't worry. You think I need a drink? Only water, no alcohol. Do you want to taste the water that doesn't uh, perish? You want to taste the water from heaven? Yes. You believe in Yeshua? Yeshua means salvation, you know that. He's the water, the water of the soul. Yes, you. Yes, you. Why, why, why? Tell me, tell me, tell me. Yes. From it? God is the one who does it. As I said, like uh, Abraham, when he was sacrificing Isaac. And then Hashem, he stepped in and says, no, let me provide the lamb. You see? And then uh, Abel, uh, who sacrificed the lamb, remember? And then Cain, whose uh, sacrifice was rejected. And you got to look at Yohanan, the next high priest, Cohen Haggadol in Israel. And uh, he said, behold, the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He was speaking about Yeshua. You see, the Bible narrative is speaking about the final sacrifice. Because, you know, and uh, because I, b I believe personally, the third temple is from heaven. That heaven will come down. Yes, I believe Yeshua is from that kingdom. It's from the kingdom of heaven. Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Praise be to Hashem, Baruch Hashem. God loves you, Israel, very much. 
sent his son to die here in Eretz Israel 2,000 years ago for the payment of your sins. 